Hello, my name is Jason. Me and my friends have a new approach to improve communication capabilities for patients with speech impairment. Speech impairment is prevalent among patients with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and throat cancer. According to the National Institute of Health, 6.7 million Americans aged above 65 have Alzheimer's. The number is estimated to nearly double by 2060. The project is an artificial intelligence model that scans and corrects errors in morphology, phonology, and syntax. We would use this AI model to help patients with speech impairment. The model will input incorrect sentences spoken by the patients and output similar sentences without any error. The project is related to three topics. Firstly, the product is a natural language processing model. So it is related to machine learning technology so that computers could comprehend human language. Secondly, we need to assess the effectiveness of the product so that we could better understand its advantages and shortcomings and make appropriate improvements. Thirdly, we want the product to be accessible to patients with varying degrees of technological familiarity. Some patients might need be able to use phones or computers, while others might need a dedicated device in order to use the product more efficiently. The project has three objectives. Firstly, we plan to develop a natural language processing model so that the AI could comprehend and analyze human languages. Secondly, we plan to compare and contrast model effectiveness across various kinds of speech impairment which would allow us to tailor the product based on each kind of illness. Thirdly, the same program could run across major platforms such as iOS, Android, and Microsoft. Using the same computer language could greatly simplify the development, testing, and maintenance of the product. Our project is unique in three ways. Firstly, our goal is quite unique compared to others. Other AIs are developed to predict or diagnose the Alzheimer's. On the other hand, our goal is to improve the quality of life for the patients already diagnosed. This approach has a more direct impact on the patients. Consequently, these direct impacts enable us to assess the effectiveness of the AI program using the combination of quantitative and qualitative methods we could have the unique opportunity to collect actual user feedback from the patients themselves. Lastly, other AIs are tailored for sophisticated medical researchers, while our product aims to ensure accessibility for the general public. This would seamlessly integrate into their daily lives. Yeah, so hi, uh, my name is Sanjit, uh, and for my portion of the presentation, I'll be going over literature review, a critique of other work, and uh, the mo uh, our motivation for our contribution um, with our product. Um, so for this portion, uh, for, 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 for literature review, I really wanted to focus on the Alzheimer's uh, disease, as it has a huge population of uh, patients that suffer from this disease which gives this uh, area of uh, research a lot of scope and just a lot of like potential. Um, and from that, on top of that, we, we see a lot of potentiality in AI um, in, in, tre in the treatment of these types of diseases, particularly in the diagnosis and for furthering research in this area, for finding key traits and key properties that we can, uh, we can, use, to, we can, we can use to treat um, these types of diseases. Um, specifically, the University of Aberdeen published a paper um, on the distinct patterns that uh, that uh, we've been able to find that cause uh, spontaneous speech de deterioration uh, and has been used as an early predictor of Alzheimer's disease, um, which really does demonstrate that the 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 uh, the fact that the, these 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 things are predictable, predictable, measurable, um, and can be trainable for any AI model. Um, on top of this, um, there was an an uh, an article by the National Institute of Health on phenomic restoration of Alzheimer's disease and dementia, um, where they essentially were able to mask certain uh, phrases or certain parts of words 
um, and asked patients to um, try to fill in the blanks, essentially. Um, what they showed was that for, for varying levels of Alzheimer's disease, they that patients had more and more uh, inability to even to, 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 to fill in the gap, whereas in the healthy control uh, people, essentially people who had uh, no, no signs of Alzheimer's, um, this was not necessarily a problem. Um, so it really does show that like the, the, the potentiality of, of filling in the blank essentially for, for patients suffering from these types of diseases, not necessarily Alzheimer's, but from Parkinson's, throat cancer, stuttering, um, uh, and, and et cetera, um, and how much this could impact, um, these, these sort of patients. So yeah, for our critique, a critique, critique of other products in this area, uh, we found uh, a work by UCLA on a model for antinent speech recognition and speech correction for people who do suffer from, say, stuttering or, say, from uh, an inability to um, essentially complete a sentence, um, which has many many parallels with this with this uh, with 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 Alzheimer's and such. Um, and essentially, they presented a model uh, known as a long short term memory model or LSTM that is uh, widely used in the field of machine learning and, and computer science um, as a fill in the blank type of model that can pr essentially predict the next word given past and future uh, training data um, and essentially past and future words in the sentence. It can essentially fill in fill in for what the word could potentially be. And they showed a, a, a great deal of success um, on uh, automatic speech recognition. Uh, one major critique of this, of, of, of this model and something that was mentioned earlier um, in the literature review is that this model really does focus on the overall word, word in general and the complete word in general, whereas it completely overlooks the morphological, the syntactical, and the phenomo phenomo phonological uh, aspects of uh, of Alzheimer's disease and 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 stuttering and all these aphasias, um, it only really does correct speech in the moment. And what we really want to do is say analyze the data. If we want we want to personalize that data uh, and really make it such that you know it's really for the individual and that we really correct their individual syntactical or just like loss uh, morphological loss in their speech. Um, yeah, so our motivation for our contribution is really that there are no products right now that really do this level of, of autocorrection for individual words, individual parts of words, phrases that are just lost or they cannot find or have to find alternatives for those, those phrases. So yeah, what we really want to do and what we've proven is possible and feasible uh, with our literature review um, is we really want to create a product that like that is able to that we, that we can train on these measurable, fixable uh, characteristics of these these diseases, and really provide some sort of like therapy almost, and some sort of like alternative um, for uh, loss of speech. So in general, our AI model is a natural language processing model that infers and predicts the words that when analyzing incorrect speech. So to do this, we will incorporate an initial data set, which includes previous recordings of patients, hopefully from before they were diagnosed and showed symptoms of deteriorated speech. The model then checks for phonological, morphological, and syntactic errors. And if there are errors, then the model would analyze the data and compare the incorrect sentence with similar correct sentences. And then over time, the model eventually improves based on the patient's data through conditioning. And for the hardware, we would include a pendant with a mic that records the patient's speech patterns. And the data recorded from the mic is how the model will be trained and tailored towards an individual in tandem to their own data set. So it's very personalized in a sense. There would also be a GUI through a device that presents potentially correct sentences to both the user and their caretaker. So for training, we selected a recurrent neural network as the model. This would convert 
sequential data, which is basically like sentences and words into a desired sequence. We would be using supervised learning as a technique. And then since the model needs to know when or where the sentence is correct or not. And then for our validation data sets, we would use different speech patterns, linguistic variations, and demographics, then use that to analyze the word prediction accuracy in comparison to actual user speech and response time. Lastly, we would also test against existing natural language processing models and speech recognition for faster training, as well as include the different stages of the disorder and progression to assess adaptation. After creating the model, we would have to test its accuracy using subject-based testing. This would work by having each patient read off a piece of text, and for any words that the patient couldn't say, we would query the model to fill in the blanks. The model's accuracy is determined by how, the, how similar the model's answer is to the actual word in the sentence. And then after that, all of the feedback is fed back into the model through supervised learning in order for it to keep improving. So there's both advantages and disadvantages to using our type of data. Some advantages are that the data enables the model to learn from actual examples of speech impairment from recordings, and the data sets are personalized for each individual. The data is also supplemented with demographic and clinical assessments, as well as textual data from medical literature. Some disadvantages may be that the recordings may be limited or inconsistent, or that the patient's thought process may not may be incomplete and not enough for the model to analyze. There would also be some ethical considerations that regard privacy. And then to test the effectiveness of the model, we would measure how the model learns from user interactions through qualitative metrics like user and caretaker interviews and quantitative metrics like testing validation data sets and existing models. We would we would partner with healthcare professionals like speech therapists and urologists to conduct clinical assessments to validate the accuracy of the model. And we could also reach out to caretakers to compare the results of the model to what they think the user will actually say since they know them the best. And then our predictions and further implementation of the AI model would be that it could potentially be integrated into applications that would also be available on the App Store or Google Play. It could be installed on a dedicated device, something like a Kindle, that would make it easier to access for a variety of users and their caretakers. We could also potentially implement our model to work with other diseases that affect hearing by using text-to-speech software. All right, so uh, this is our feedback discussion. I interviewed two linguists from Berkeley. Um, this is Amber, Amber Galvano is the first one. Uh, she is a... PhD, she is a PhD student in third year at Berkeley right now uh, in the sociophonetics and phonology. So related to linguistics, which is really, really important and it's what our study is about. Um, and I asked her, first of all, she said the product is feasible first and foremost, which is really, really nice. As long, but with the caveat of as long as you're able to compose a data set with, of those with Alzheimer's and those without. Basically, um, we need to have a data set. Uh, we need to have a data set in which we know uh, what the Alzheimer's people were trying to say. It doesn't, it like lexical studies could not, could possibly not suffice is basically what she was saying. And she was saying that could prove difficult considering that there was no public da recorded data set of Alzheimer's speech being transcribed correctly. They basically, Alzheimer's people aren't chiming in saying, oh, that's what I meant. Uh, sometimes we're too far gone, this and that. There is no formal study, at least not available on the internet at the moment. Uh, so it's really important that we have a baseline that we improve upon over and over again. Uh, so we should contain data. So she recommended that we should contain data from everybody and not just from a singular person. We mentioned earlier that we would use it from pre, from uh, pre diagnosis, a time before their diagnosis, before like or before their symptoms come into place, and we would train the model consecutively until we have a pattern of their speech. But we should be we should do that still. But we should do it. Um, we should combine all the data together in order to create our own data set because baselines are really, really, really important. But overall, she said it was really useful for those with speech deterioration issues. And then I talked to another professor. Uh, sh her name is Alexandra Fifner. She is a linguistics professor here, PhD, has a PhD from Brown, if I recall correctly. Yeah, uh, in phonetics. Yes, in phonetics. But, and I talked to her and she was really into this stuff and she asked and she presented information to us that was unbeknownst. So basically, uh, she mentioned that this it's not necessarily needed for our model to be trained on their speech at all, because, uh, and the only reason to do so would be for like anecdotally creating a data set that would be for them personally. Personability is basically the only reason we would ever do that. 
like as in I say uh, I say uh, like I say uh or um, or I say like like a lot or basically, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's for personalized words with your speech patterns in general. But this lexical prediction cast can happen from just NLP, natural language processing. Like corpus studies predicting the next words, basically a bunch of words, and uh, they would just query a model and ask it if it can predict the next word and it would do it. So it's a thing that can be done. Uh, so, but she mentioned also that there probably is a database out there uh, it may, but it's just not public. Uh, basically, somebody, some doctor, some big medical company out there probably has a data set discussing patterns of speech, discuss how that's a database of speech patterns of those with particular diseases. We don't, so we don't necessarily need to create our own from scratch, as we thought previously with her, with you know, with her, with um, with Amber, with Amber's suggestion. Um, but yeah, like, oh, and also it wouldn't work for things that are like. That damage the vocal cords, so it'll work for things that are cognitive in nature, like the, the model itself would work for things that are cognitive in nature, but not necessarily things like throat cancer. Because if you have like a if you have like a damaged larynx, this and that, or if you have like a surgery and you had to have a stoma, like it would be very difficult to transcribe the speech, basically. Last thing that uh Fifner mentioned is that privacy is a big issue. Uh and the ethics department, a lot of red flags would be raised because we are these people have a tech technically have a mental disease or like have a disease or mental disability they're like in they're like inhabilitated in a way or i believe that's the word yeah uh but yeah they would just they have a problem and ethics departments when you're giving them a product even for the benefit of themselves even for the benefit of them it still raises some red flags in the ethics department considering that it'd be 24 7 monitoring so yeah uh so limitations, just going to recap our limitations really, really quickly. Um, so obtaining a data set uh, or making our own, we can either make our own data set or we can go out to, to the big guy, to, big, to whoever and get a data set. Uh, but obtaining our data set, making a data set of our own is also possible. Could potentially be possible, but that could prove difficult. It'd be very nice if we could just grab a data set that like actually fits the model itself. Privacy and ethics, as I mentioned previously, is a really big problem. So we have to keep that into consideration. But you know, hopefully people would be willing to get the product regardless because it would it, it could be potentially life changing for somebody with some sort of speech deterioration disease, as long as it is cognitive in nature and not physical, but not a physical manifestation as in like damage to the vocal cords, et cetera. But yeah, that's that.